LOLs, uh, some of the guys out in Long Island. Timmy will have some there. You'll have someone, some a lot of pumps up in Westchester. We so. For the low pressure. Exactly. Well, there's a lot of areas out by the lake, which this is kind of more set up for like his area with a suction line in a pond or a lake. Mike has them in Connecticut. Two guys who will jump in and also if I miss anything or if you have any good information to add, since you're a pro, you're a pro, talk, add, whatever. So pretty much what we have here is the biggest thing with a pump is obviously you have your, your pump here. This is a one and a half horsepower pump. You know, this pretty, you know, decent sized pump here, you know, for it to pull out of a lake. Some, uh, most of our common pumps that we see guys like us, like in, you know, regular houses, we have stuff like here, like a booster pump. And uh, this is a lot of times what a lot of you guys are using city water. You guys are using like a simmer pump, okay? All this is here, it plugs in, regular 110 outlet. You know, city water comes in, it boosts it up a little bit. You know, you get probably about another 20 to 30 PSI, another five to 10 gallons a minute, depending on what you're using. And that's good for just like a small insulation, you know, or you really have really low pressure, boom. The thing is, is that if you have a really low flow rate, and you have decent pressure, if you're getting 50 PSI, 60 PSI, but a horrible flow rate, putting a pump in is not going to help your situation. It's not, you know, most guys automatically think, I'll go on estimates, people, they only have like say four gallons a minute. They'll say, oh, every company told me to freaking put a pump in. I'm like, well, you can't, you have 60 PSI, you only have four gallons a minute. What most likely it is, is that you have an old lead line coming in from the street. So that lead main coming in from the street, over the years, it must might have been a one inch line. You know, now it's, it's, it's the size time. of a dime. So. Yeah, so don't get yourself caught up saying, oh, I'm gonna put a pump in, it's gonna work. It's not, because if you have a hole this big, whether well, you put a pump or not, you're still not gonna have yeah, you're not, you, In order to have a pump, you gotta be able to get water. It had, the pump has to suck water to be able to put out water, okay? The other but, thing you gotta be careful is if you guys, if you guys do end up installing pumps, you gotta be careful. Sometimes when you install a pump and you tie it to the main, sucks all the water out of the house. Now all of a sudden, you know, the, they go to use water in the house. A lot of times what we do is when you when you tie in and, and as the pipe goes out to the sprinkler, you also tie it back into the house. So you just, you know, that's just something to think about. You don't want to drain all the water out of the house. So. Every time they go to flush the toilet, open a sink, they're going to get air pockets. Right. That's something that you don't want. Uh, for today, we're going to pretty much, a lot of today is just going to be talking about priming a pump because a lot of you guys kind of run into that. Well, first we'll go over the basics of the pump. Every pump here, there's a, there's a spot in the back here. This, sh this shell comes off, okay? Back here, there's two terminals, obviously, a white and a black wire and a green ground. So you'd have to wire the pump, you know, white your neutral, and I uh, mean, um, yeah, white your, well, no, white your, uh, here, white your neutral, yeah. black's your hot wire, green's your ground. Unless it's 220. Sometimes exactly. they're 220, then it's just, you know, just the hot and the hot, black and black. There is no new have something exactly. inside. And even when you install pumps, sometimes you gotta watch that most of the time they come 220, unless it's the like pre, one of these. This one here was pre-wired for 220. There's a switch inside of it that you pull over that makes it to 110. Sometimes there's an adapter that you have to just turn around and revert, mm -hmm. it'll make it to 110. So like for this instance, I was originally gonna plug this in, but once I tried plugging this pump in to actually make it shoot water, <laughs> it blew the breaker. <laughs> So I can't really actually show you a live, uh, live pump, but what I did was here is I took the wire here from, so this pump here doesn't work on a pressure switch. This pump requires what's called a pump star relay. Mitty, I need you to move. Sorry. <laughs> what this does here is this gets wired to the pump star relay. The pump star relay has another electrical wire that gets fed back to a breaker. So this is actually controlling your electrical. This, you can think of this as like a light switch. So pretty much this light switch stays off until the timer kicks on. Once the timer kicks on, boom, power's transferred, pump kicks on, water starts to flow. <coughs> everyone, everyone get that, everyone make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Biggest thing that you have to do is most of you guys who went through, you go to some houses that have this. Inside of here, you have a, normally it's either two wire or three wire that gets wired from the clock to the, to the relay. What happens is sometimes during winterization, you don't want the pump running because you don't want it to run dry. Guys will remove the master valve wire, the pump wire, out. Remember when you go to start the system back up, <laughs> you gotta connect it back, otherwise the pump's not gonna work. Okay? Some commercial has them, right? Exactly. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing. It's two wires, one's in the common, one's usually on the pump master valve, okay?
Guys, yeah, just a quick tip. I label, either label, I mean, my guys carry uh, wire labels, but also just mark down which wire yeah. is the pump wire because it always gets confusing. Um, especially if you have a master valve and the relay. And 20 other wires sitting and in the control yeah, box. Exactly. And also, <laughs> really there, take a lot there, of time. there actually are clients that have actual switches light switches yeah. that actually shut off the whole system. Yeah. There's, um, there's a hundred different setups do. with them. Yeah, yeah, so. You'll and see that they have an actual power switch here next to it mm -hmm. that you can flip it off. Some people you know, won't even have anything like, sometimes the, the pumps are live right to a breaker. You actually have to go to the breaker. Yeah, that's. Um, each setup on a pump here is different. So pretty much what we have here, we're kind of uh, doing is we're saying we're pulling out of a, uh, say this is our beautiful lake here, okay? Very nice lake, very large lake. Um, inside the ground here, and I'll actually show you guys. In order to pull, you actually have to have a suction line. Obviously this here going into our lake is our, what's called our suction line. At the bottom of a suction line is what's called a foot valve. This is actually a, uh, like a check valve. So the screen here is to prevent any debris from being sucked up into the line. But there's an actual check valve in here so what that check valve does is it opens up when it feels suction to allow water to be pulled, but it will not let the pump lose prime. What that means is that it will not let any water in this line be drained back out through the foot valve. The reason for that is for a pump to work, a pump needs to be filled with water. What they call that is they call that you know uh, pump priming. You have to fill the water with, with, with water, put the pump with water, and then it'll start to flow. So in other words, when you first start this thing up, you would open this and you'd fill this with water. Once you see the water stop here, you stop. If you see that water go back down, that means there's, there might be some dirt in that. This water has to stay there, otherwise you're not gonna get that primed. You'll just run the pump you'll, and burn the pump out. You know you have an issue if this water goes back down. So before you even start the priming, make sure that water stays there. There's different applications. Sometimes you're not gonna use a foot valve, sometimes you're tied into city water. You want a check valve. So if this was tied to city water, you want to have a check valve on the line, and this is what's called an inline check valve. So when water pushes through, you know, when it's, it's sucked in, it rises up, it's allowed to go. Once the pump stops, it's not allowing any water to be drained back or pulled out to another source. Big thing on a pump too, what helps to make it, to want to do is you always want to try to have a pressure gauge on it. So this way that'll help you catch prime. So once you do prime the pump, you can start it up quick and it'll hold at a specific pressure just so you know that it's primed if you're running it on a pressure switch. Um, there's multiple ways now to you know, prime a pump. One of the easiest ways, which you always hope, is that a pump is next to a hose spigot. Because at that point in time, turn the water on, open your valve. What I recommend is that on each pump, you know, usually depending on the pump you have, they're either gonna come with a uh, metal or a plastic uh, cap here. This threads out easily, cross threads easily, breaks easily. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll set something up with a ball valve here so that I don't have to keep unscrewing and re-screwing in the prime plug if it's a pump that you're constantly going to prime and, and, and do stuff with. So here I just set up a little thing here. I can hook up a garden hose, open it up. I can fill this with water. That's one way. Garden hose is the easiest because normally these suction lines aren't this small. They're 40, 50, 60 feet. Okay? That's the fastest way. Next way you could do is you could put a little funnel in here. Take five gallon buckets of water. Mike has stuff out by a lake. The pump's right at the edge of the lake. He goes, takes his five gallon bucket of water, scoops up water from the lake, pours it in, fills the pump, okay? Once this reaches water, water starts bubbling over. Then at that point, you can close this off and you can start to turn it on, okay? But if you go to fill it and the water starts draining down, that means something's wrong, like he was saying? It's not that it means something wrong, it's wrong it means that this may not be filled yet. Okay. Once you get the water and all the air out of it, and then it, all of a sudden it just starts keeps, you know, it will never stop holding. Like if you put a hose on this, for, if this is a 40 foot suction line, you had a hose on there for two minutes, it, it better stop, you know, filling yeah. with water. It never stop? It, it has to stop, it has to stop, it has to bubble up and over. If it doesn't stop, then- Then you have an issue. There's an issue. Either the pipe filling broke, uh -huh. and the check valve is not closing. And it's not filling, it's just leaking out. Well, what do you, what do you normally do if you have a lot of air in the line that you can't get out? You open, open it up, you open and the, I'll fill it up and then I'll go turn it on, try to sure. get that air out of it, then I'll fill it up some more. It depends on how long the suction line is, because you might have 
80 feet out in the water and yep. there's some air still trapped in there. So what he's saying here is that sometimes you may fill this up, you may think it's full of water, okay, or even pulling from a, pulling from a shallow well, you may think it's full of water, but what the first couple times you gotta do is kind of flip the pump on real quick, then shut it off. What that does is it kind of creates a little turbulence in the pipe and will eject some of the air out of it. Then try filling it up again. Sometimes you gotta do that two, three, four, even maybe five times to get all the air out, refill it till the water bubbles over, and then actually start to try to prime the pump. You'll know the pump's primed if you have a setup like this. You turn the pump on, you open this up, the hose bib up, and water starts whipping out of here nonstop. Your pump's primed, you're ready to go. Um, now that's, you know, that's pretty much, feed, you're priming it with a hose, and that's priming it with a, with a bucket by pouring it in. There's other ways you can do it too. Sometimes, you know, out in the field, especially like, well, sometimes you need a device to help you prime it if you don't have a, a bucket or a hose by you. There's two different things you can do. This here is like a, it's an old fashioned like well, well style hand pump. Pretty much you can put this on top, you'll crank it, water will start to obviously flow out of here once it's, start, once it's full, okay? That pulls the water back out of the water so it can fill the pipe up without you having to. This here is, is another style, I have this set up on here already, so I'm just gonna use this as an example. This here is just, it's designed for long suction lines. It's a, uh, like an air, it's an um, air gap in here with the little rubber gasket and it pulls up water. So when I start to crank this here, it's gonna pull water from here and fill this all the way up. So I'm gonna open up here, I'm gonna open up my bowl valve. So you're creating your own suction and filling it up. So once we turn on the system, you got instantaneous water. So, so watch, you'll hear, you'll actually hear it. Where do I get that? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> this one up. John filled it up yesterday, so it has water and it's gonna squirt a little bit. But you'll hear, you hear the water being pulled up? Yeah. 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 So well, water's in the pump already. That baby's full. So I'm full. Yeah, you can feel it. That's it. It's about three pumps. It fills it up. Someone decided to uh, over pump it yesterday and they put all water in this already, so. That's what happened. <clears throat> now, should we get those? Or so not? that's like how. If you have a lot of well. You know. Well, now the pump is full of water. Right? Pump's full of water. And you can turn it you on. You can turn it on. Okay. Just close down. And turn it on. Yep. Then you would open up here. Turn on the sprinkler line. The sprinklers can run. Guys who you know, guys who have some, you know, sometimes you'll have a homeowner that has one of these already there. Just make what you want to. You don't want to leave it on top of the pump because listen, this could over time someone hit it or break, crack the pump. Also, too, you can also leave this prime port here in. You don't need to prime it to the prime port. What you can do is on the top of the pump here, you could put an actual T here, so it's a bigger opening, especially if you're going to fill it with a bucket. Put a bowl valve, you can have bowl valve up top. This way, it's easier to pour into it, and you can prime back through the top. Now, are those prime ports always on top on top of the pump? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah, I, I know about the pumps that I have. You don't have any of the pumps that I was you working with. You usually have just the bleed screw here yeah, to I drain have, the pump. Yeah, I always have those bleed screws down, but there's like two of them. That's where sometimes you have to actually have a T here so that you can just, you know, that's why you can close this bowl valve here. You can actually prime it through here, hook a hose up and, and, it'll go and right feed it back in. Cool. It's always good to shut the valve going to the system so it locks that water in. With yeah, so you can isolate and focus on getting that pump filled and then worry about the manifold in the system. Yeah. Any, uh, I can't believe that's all I have to do. That pisses me on. I would just say <laughs> yeah, after, after you run me. the system, I mean, and, and then you know you shut down and everything's good. Just go back and just check, and make sure the water's still sitting there. By the time you get back to the pump, if it seeps back down into the water, it could have a small leak in the foot valve, and a small leak in the foot valve is a new pump in the future. Yeah. So you have to be really careful with that. I have experience. Oh, yeah. that.